So we're back in Billy Glasheen's field of red clover that we visited back in early spring. It was January or February. It's now the first week of August and we're going to do uh, a little update on how the field's been performing through the year and also on some of the, the main management tips around red clover. We've seen a big increase in the interest in red clover this year, largely helped by the Department of Agriculture um, scheme and the grant to, to sow red clover. But I think farmers have really been turned on to, to the value and the benefits that red clover can bring to the system. In a cutting mix like this, to get enough red clover into the mix, you're looking at about four kilos of red clover to the acre, and then you've got uh, maybe six or seven kilos of, of perennial ryegrass or Italian ryegrass, maybe even a, a hybrid ryegrass, maybe some of the DLF plus grasses, and uh, might help to boost your, your production in a particularly dry site like this. And we also have a, a kilo of white clover in there just to kind of to balance out the mixture and exploit some of those multi-species um, traits um, with the, the white clover kind of filling in the blank spaces um, in, the, in the lower part of the crop. Mainly it was the, the protein and the quality of this crop is what we're really looking for. So Billy finishes, finishes cattle here and so he's looking for, for something to offset his feed bill uh, over the winter. So we're hoping to get about 18% crude protein here, but we're also hoping for a really palatable, um, a really palatable silage that, that has really high intakes. There's been a lot of talk about red clover this year and a lot more of it has been sown uh, compared to other years. Uh, red clover, it's a, a, high, a high protein, high yielding crop, um, like it's white clover cousin, it's capable of producing its own nitrogen, it's a legume. So with red clover, because it's a, a bigger, higher yielding plant, uh, it's capable of producing up to 200 kilograms of nitrogen per hectare uh, over a year. So it's, it's another option for, for reducing our, our carbon footprint on farm and increasing the sustainability and the profitability of our farm systems. So unlike white clover, red clover um, has a, a more upright growth habit, so it grows up high in the sward. Uh, it grows from a single growing point. It doesn't self-replicate like white clover, so for that reason, we use it mostly for cutting uh, because it's, it's more prone to damage and more prone to overgrazing by animals. Compared to white clover, red clover has more of a tap root rather than the fibrous white clover root, so this gives it a, a relative degree of, of drought tolerance compared to, to other uh, clovers. In terms of growing and managing red clover, um, like any other plant, it likes a high uh, soil fertility, so we need to make sure that our P's and K's are in index 3. It likes a good level of soil pH, so we need to get up around 6.3 up to 6.5 to, to maximise and optimise production and optimise the, the nitrogen fixing capability of the, of the um, bacteria on the, on the roots. We typically sow red clover when temperatures are a little bit warmer than we would grass, so into late April, May and June are, are good times to sow red clover when temperatures in the soil are rising and we're, getting, we're still getting enough moisture to, to allow for germination. With red clover we'll be looking to get about four cuts over the year, so our first cut is going to come in, in the middle of May, uh, toward, maybe towards the end of May, depending on the part of the country. And then after that, every six or seven, eight, seven weeks, uh, we're going to be taking a cut of red clover. With a red clover crop, we want to cut it a little bit higher than a grass crop, so we're looking at about seven centimetres of a residual left after harvest. Uh, this is just to make sure that we don't damage the, the higher growing point of the red clover plant. So compared to perennial ryegrass, um, Red clover has a, a much lower dry matter, so it has a higher uh, moisture content in the crop. So that can sometimes be difficult when we're when we're in siling. So to make sure we make make the best preservation, we need to cut the crop when it's dry. Uh, maybe give it a wilt and uh, maybe row it up after maybe 24, 36 hours, depending on the drying conditions, and we should have good uh, red, si red clover silage after that. It's important not to, to toss the crop around too much, so we wouldn't be using a, a conditioner on the mower, wouldn't be raking it and rowing it up, up and in and out uh, all the time if we just um, mow the crop, leave it sit there, and then come in and row it up gently uh, before we bale it or pit it. This is to avoid any leaf loss or leaf shatter uh, when we're handling the crop. Fertilizer throughout the year, um, as I mentioned earlier, red clover is a leg so it fixes its own nitrogen and, and lots of it so we don't need to apply any chemical nitrogen to the to the crop applying chemical nitrogen will, will shorten the lifespan of the crop so typically um, as I said we want to keep our P's and K's in order so 0730 our slurry is going to be the main source of nutrients here so if we apply some slurry in in the in the in the start of the year to get the crop growing so maybe two or three thousand gallons per acre um, and then after that take our first cut and, and apply P and K as your, as your soil test advises. As always, there's lots of information on growing and managing red clover and, on our website, and you can also download the DLF Red Clover Agronomy Guide. And if you wish, you can also call any member of the team for more help.